Good evening, everybody. Welcome to League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Inventors. I'm your host, Mike from Faraday Research. Welcome to the show. It is Friday night, August 9th, 2024. Welcome to the show. Uh, we got a regular panel. We got Ben on. We got Nathan on. We got uh, Philip on. And we have Lulu. Uh, welcome to the show. How's everybody tonight? Good. Good. Everybody's good. Had a productive week. How you doing, everybody? Good. I uh, saw. So I saw you. Uh, you 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 were streaming videos this week. Uh, um, is that you, benefactor? Uh, I had a couple of uh, clips that I clipped from uh, Nathan and I's podcast for Gerald. I plan on clipping, you know, um, the best moments uh, from you know all of our shows and making like a little mini series out of it. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, I, th I thought you were streaming some live experiment. No, um, I will be actually. I'm setting up right now, so um, my audience can get a little peek of uh, you know my setup. Uh, I'm not getting any viewers right now, so maybe that'll spark somebody's interest. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, uh just to let everybody know, live chat is open. So if you want to chit chat on our live stream, you can just ask questions to our inventors. I guess we'll just go through our panel. Uh, ben, what have you been working on this week? Uh, this week, I'm getting ready to get my coil back up because uh, the reference circuit uh, motor disconnected one of the leads. So I gotta, I gotta get that back up so Monday we can show up the coil in uh, in its full glory for um and be ready for our guest awesome nathan uh what have you been up to this week uh one and two tesla coils right now so yeah. i'm building one that looks like a, a thing you would find in ancient egypt so i had to restructure it in cad program and everything else so right. you can't tell it's a tesla coil it just looks like a kind of like a lamp and it turns on and it goes out three or four feet so if you're walking right. by with a light bulb it'll just start turning on that's cool. Mm -hmm. So awesome, uh, Philip. Uh, any updates on uh, your projects? Um, actually, I, I've been working on my uh, on my software C plus plus superset. I updated it, and uh, it's pretty powerful. And I'm trying to. Uh, oh yeah, I seen that now. post. Yeah, I seen that post you had on uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. That. So um, it's pretty powerful, and uh, I keep updating it. And I had a talk with DDN. Uh, DDN is uh, some big tech linked with NVDA. Right. Uh, they oh, are, nice. they're, they're looking at the memory manager and stuff like that. So they, because they, they're, they're, the hard drive are using a garbage collector, and that's, that's what I'm replacing. And my memory manager replaces the garbage collectors. And right. uh, with SSD drive these days, they all use garbage collector, and I, I'm saying that I can speed that up mm -hmm. so, uh, to make it predictable. Cool. Yeah, so right. uh, they're looking into that right now. But the, uh, I mean, I had my five minutes of fame, so that, that's that's what I was looking for, you know. I had my five minutes mm -hmm. of fame with uh, some big tech, so that's, yeah, that's uh, I was looking for that. That's for, awesome. Uh, yeah. Right on. And. Uh, cool. My experiment is being prepared. The, the gallium vortex, the magneto hydrodynamics right. uh, vortex right. of gallium, is getting prepared this week. Uh, I was wow. supposed to have initial result today, actually, but they, they're missing a piece, so I'm, that's going to be next week. So right. next next week is going to be very interesting. So stay tuned uh, for next week. I'm going to have the results of my uh, experiment in a professional lab right oh i'll be i'll be there i'm excited i'll be there with my popcorn phil <laughs> yeah cool yeah are you gonna are you gonna present that on apac or you're just gonna do it here um, well I'll, I'll do it i'll do it here first apac it's right. an open lab i think uh, on the, the day after so okay. um i'll do it here to see, see if uh, if tim if tim is here then I'm not going to do it on APEC, but uh, uh, we'll see. But uh, I'm looking for investors, obviously. I, I, once I yeah. know it, it works, so I'm looking for investors. So obviously, I'm going to 
broadcast it everywhere I can. So, uh, so yeah, it's gonna be uh, pretty much official next week. That you know, I'm not, I'm not delusional or anything like that. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's good. Uh, Lulu, what's happened with you? You're, you're back home now, right? Yes, I'm back home. Uh, I've been trying to retrieve data, like old videos, things from old devices, trying to do conversions between Android and Apple. It's possible to do. For some reason, they, they don't like each other. Let's just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> you know. Yeah, a, well, the Apple's always been like a proprietary software. I found, you know, trying to integrate Apple and Android, it's like crap, you know, like it's so, almost next to impossible. Yeah, because do uh, formats to be able to transfer. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's. You need, you know, so some people say that uh, Apple is crap or Microsoft is crap or whatever, and they, they're kind of extremists, but Microsoft is good for games and 3D rendering. The Mac is good for multimedia and connecting using a VPN on a Linux server. Linux server. And yeah, the yeah. Linux server is good for all the development and everything else, like uh, when web hosting and things like that. So you can't say that, oh, Apple is crap or Microsoft is crap. They, they're all good. They, they all, they, they're all good in their uh, respective area, you know? So if yeah. you need to play games, obviously, you're not going to need not getting to use Linux. Trying to yeah, they all have their place. Like transfer, yeah, exactly. Like Android to Apple device is almost impossible. It needs a, a medium in between. You know, maybe a yeah, little... proprietary BS has got to go. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean it's it's simple task. <laughs> talking about games, or we're not talking about like huge, you know, uh, data files or anything like that. It's an important thing. It still won't. Allow, it, it doesn't even recognize the existence of the device even though it's connected to wi-fi it's next to each other you know it still does not reckon so i got to figure out a different way of let's so see. is it the uh, android that cannot connect or the yeah, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's an old gorilla phone uh um, that's not like the, um, the old usb stick but yeah, yeah. right can be dropped it, it, but there's there's Bluetooth and uh, boy, the Wi Fi yeah. not seem to uh, recognize that like it cannot find the Bluetooth devices in it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? Get, get the latest Bluetooth uh, the device because they keep updating the uh, Bluetooth firmware and the old Bluetooth. You can't update the firmware on it. You have to buy a new Bluetooth device. You have to like look at the uh, the year the Bluetooth uh, code came out or whatever. Like this year, they came out with a new Bluetooth code. I had to uh, throw out my old headphones. Is is it is it like the trust certificate expired for that like Bluetooth code? No, no. The, the old Bluetooth still works. It just has compatibility issues when you plug in more than one Bluetooth device, and they start knocking each other off the network. From, causing all kinds of problems Maybe and that, that and then you got to i'm talking about your bluetooth transmitter the one that connects your computer to all your devices that's the thing you got to get the latest year model or whatever so yeah. can you pull all your videos off on a uh, card mm -hmm. or just put them on the computer and then go over to some site and convert no i don't if you want to use the site but they'll have all your photos and stuff yeah because then they they can track it back from the ID of the uh, J like the the uh, the file name and they could go into whatever device and delete it off of there cuz i had already transferred it a while back to an apple device but it's nowhere to be found they somebody you know hacked their way in and deleted it this is the only safest device that i have now with the videos on it other like anything i tried to integrate it or create a file and send it it it's still it's being deleted but this one so, this, yeah this one doesn't have a network on it yet the only network um, that on it is the my network but if i connect it to the carrier like if i take the chip out of my cell phone and put it back in this one they'll delete it the second that it hits a, a carrier signal it's gone gotcha okay well i was just wondering like usually i download everything to my computer and then if i have to put it over to an apple i just use a conversion software to do it 
in my computer, yeah. not on my phone. So it's, it goes a lot faster. Is is the convert yeah. software like stationary to you? It, it, like, you have to go through the web to an, a server for it to work. Like, you know, know, to be honest with you, it might be something like that. It's like a, a in your browser kind of thing. Then, then they have access to it. Just yeah. Like, but the the, the Wi-Fi wi works on your Android. The Wi-Fi works. On my, uh, it says uh, low connectivity. Okay, but uh, you you can browse the the internet using uh, the Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know. Let me, let me try it. So five point four is the latest Bluetooth. Okay, version. let me try YouTube. Let's see YouTube. Uh, let's see if it logs. No. How about your uh, your uh, hub for the house for your internet? Is that fairly new or is that an older yeah. hub? Yeah, that's, that's very new. The Xfinity and they sent me the device less than a, maybe a month ago. But, okay, so it's the latest. Yeah. I just find when it comes down to reliability and being able to uh, uh, jumble files between old phones and PCs, I just find the Android just is way better than the, than the Apple for some reason. Like you might try replacing the wireless location for make sure it's not sitting somewhere near a, like an electrical panel or something or a light bulb that's really bright. No, that EMF I, will screw up the signal. No, I have it uh, in the game room. But it's nothing. It's not close to anything. It's just me. <clears throat> but on, on the Android, there, there's an application there called the EES file browser. You can create a little server and you can connect your computer to the little server to transfer files back and forth to and from the what is it called? To your computer. It's a ES file explorer, but that's that's for the iPhone. But they, they probably have it for the Android as well. I'll look into that. Is it just an app or yeah, it's an app. It creates a little server so you can oh, uh, you can okay. connect like a uh, 192.168. whatever the address is. Right, right. And uh, you, you transfer files from the computer back and forth. Yeah, I'll have to look. The only problem yeah. I ever had with Wi Fi is, is I had a breaker panel in the way of where I was, you know, it was like in the line of sight and it, it was blocking the signal to get into a certain yeah. area. Yeah, that would do that. You got oh, the six cool. I see Benefactor what you're doing. The the the, uh, the, uh, the other guy was doing it also on uh, you know Ken Wheeler? Ken Wheeler? Ken Wheeler? Ken Wheeler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can make the pharaoh cell. Actually, that's one thing I want to build. Is a pharaoh cell. And you can actually it, it helps you map out uh, magnetic fields. Oh, I just want to show everybody really quick before I forget. This is the power cell that I'm working on. So you can kind of get an idea. I can't talk about what's on the inside, but this is a four by four panel. Uh, very high grade graphite panels. Okay, so you, you have your graphite on you? Yeah, I got samples right now, but the problem is a lot of the to source out a lot of this stuff is military grade so yeah. to the general so mm -hmm. to the general public stuff like this mm -hmm. is almost next to impossible to get for like a you know a decent price mm -hmm. so i'm trying to figure out a way of fabricating my own plates so i'm getting close to doing some tests on that and uh if i can get past that barrier making them making the cells is easy it's, it's the plates. They're so hard to get, right? Mm -hmm. and, mo and most of the ones that are on the consumer market are this big. So mm -hmm. that's not going to work. Yeah. Right? I want to make 12 by 12 plates. Mm -hmm. You know, the bigger surface area that you have mm -hmm. for these power cells, the more current you can create. Yeah. Also, you know, with, with just with my small ones, I was getting over two amps. Um, uh, my partner that I'm working on the project with, he he used a, a 13 by 13 sheet, and he got over 17 amps coming out of it. So that's a huge amount of huge amount of power. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's the big hurdle I'm working with right now. Just uh, if I can fabricate my own plates, I have a couple of really cool ideas that I could actually make any size I want for like pennies on the dollar compared to buying it, you know, military grade graphite. Yeah. Mikey, go sit down. Uh, oh, I forgot to add, uh, Mike, uh, what have you been working on this week? Uh, just ideas, brainstorming. And I have a good one for a relay um, uh, that turns off the electromagnet as soon as it turns on and repeats that over and over again. So I want to use two coils that have about 500 or more ohms on them. So I use no current, you know, and I want to put like 40 volts through it and pulse the two coils with this relay up and down kind of relay with uh it triggers two power sources onto two loads back and forth it's a yeah it's a relay and i'm gonna just probably start with that relay and then i'm gonna look for some pre-made coils that are already like 500 or more ohms on them to test out a high frequency switching on these two coils between them you know back and forth I want to do high frequency without burning out the transistor. So that's why I'm going with a high impedance coil just to, you know, lose, lose the amps. Hmm. Very cool. So, and so uh, the, what's the, the switching will be mechanical, not, not transistor. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been frequency. doing a lot of studying on the NMP channel MOSFETs, what they're actually using in those uh those chips they're using uh silica carbide so i've been studying silica carbide which is one of the components that i'm using in this in the power cells so you might want to look up on that too mike that might actually help you out with some of your stuff silica for the, for the contacts uh just as the semiconductor but they use them in the n channel and p channel mosfets that's what no, I'm going with this re relay uh, mechanical switch. I'm not using a, a transistor on this guy because mm -hmm. it's it's not needed because um, there's well, not I'm thinking, be any... yeah, I can't, I can't been... do it with transistors. It's too difficult. You need four of them and a bunch of circuitry and I could just make the relay and right. it's just easier with the relay. Now also too, they're very good for uh, apparently they use them in uh, diodes as well. Yeah, gating, I mean, the transistors, gating. I'll use that for uh, other thing, you know, but I want to do the relay because I can't blow it. It'll never blow out, you know, and it's going to be getting high frequency spikes across it. I, I don't I don't uh, I'm a little bit worried about going all doing all this work with the four transistors and all the wiring of all that, getting it working. And then it just keeps blowing out on me. You know, if I do the relay to do the function of what the transistors will do. There's no risk of burning out the relay. And I could push it. You know, I could push the frequency and the voltage without worrying about burning out parts and having to rebuild it all over and over again, you know? Right. It says, yeah, the transistors, I'm going to only use those for things that I'm sure are, are set. The circuit's set, not going to be changed, and it's not going to burn out. And then I'll go with a transistor for that, you know? But for an experiment, right. I think the relay is more reliable for me. Yeah, to to well, uh, that's, experiment with even even in my pulse motors, the relay has been far surpasses the reliability. Yeah. You can push them. Yeah, you know, that's right. Where, you know, like I've blown so many circuits, and the second I hook up my relay to it, all my problems disappear. Right. Because the things that people relay. don't know is that your transistor will go bad and keep working. And you'll think everything's fine and you're just but you're having a little bit of a problem and you can't understand why it's not quite performing like it was because the transistor is slightly damaged and you just don't realize it you know yeah yeah exactly you won't get that with a mechanical switch that's Ever. right yeah i i put my switches through hell and back and they keep chugging along as long as that carbon 
No, it's true. As long as I keep that that carbon contact point, if that you stays healthy, right. you just clean it up and you're you're back to your you know on the way again and you can run it. That's why I, I live by these little uh, relay switches. They're great. And I figure if, you know, once too. you get your thing figured out with the relay and you're comfortable with your voltage and your current and all that, then put the transistor in its place. You know? Yeah. Save yourself yeah. a headache of, of, you know, not knowing what's going on because <coughs> one of your transistors is slightly damaged, you know? Yeah. Once that happens, you can't, the experiment's over. You got to change the transistor. Yeah. And I've blown enough up to, yeah. Like I've actually dead shorted my relay a couple of, on a couple of occasions and to the point where I actually almost had to pry it open with a screwdriver. And then I just let it cool down and boom, fire it right back up. She goes right back on again. She just can't do that, but it's still slightly damaged. You just don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there is thermal damage after that point, but you know, with my yeah, relay, you can put the oscope on there and zoom in real good, and you'll you may see it, you know, on the signal or something. Yeah, yeah. What is Ben this doing? One, I don't know. <laughs> he he gave us a thumbs up. I don't know if he's trying to start this thing up or what. <laughs> I I just see it. I I see his butt come across the screen every once yeah, in a while. That, and then right. I see a coil, and I'm like, okay, what are we doing? Oh, the thumbs up, it means it's just set up. That's all. I got oh, it angled okay. properly. You got it set up. Got, okay. Well, at least he's got his lab coat on, so we're not getting <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're not getting, <laughs> always. We're not, we're, not, we're, not get, we're not getting full butt in the screen. <laughs> yeah, that prevents the butt crack syndrome or whatever. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well. Oh. Yeah, uh, you never know what happens on this show. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Hey, Ben, did you ever get anything like an oscilloscope or a cheap little one or anything like that? Not yet, but I can hook it up to the laptop, can I? I got a couple small ones that I got on Amazon. I usually use those if I'm doing an experiment and I don't know if it's going to blow the snot out of it. <laughs> so I used the little cheap $60 ones. Yeah, they're I have a really, yeah, I have a really but nice all, one though. All I would need to hook it up to the laptop is an audio cable, right? With a left and a right channel. Yeah. You're, we're yeah. talking about different things all together right now. We're, we're on the other side where the oscilloscope tells you what you're doing and everything else. It shows you everything. You're talking about the going into signal. We're oh, talking, about, talking about the output. Okay. No, not necessarily the output, but like a sitting next to it kind of thing and reading everything that's coming out of it. Like, for Actually, instance, when I set mine up, there's just a little wire sitting there, and you connect your little probe to it, and it'll tell you everything on your oscilloscope of what's going on next to your device. Actually, the oscilloscope I have, I just put the probe. I just put the probe like next to it, and yeah. it picks it up. I don't even. I don't even have to physically attach it to a wire. It actually, picks up the uh, the free uh, the field. I guess coming off the off the machine. I yeah. just put the probes right next to it. I don't even. Yeah, half the time I don't even have to connect it. It's picking it up. That happens. Right? I mean, you know, the I only if you got it got enough power, you know, coming through it, you know. Well, you know? yeah, when I, especially with the transducer, oh yeah, it picks it up like no problem. Maybe that's what it is—the transducer. It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's spinning up that signal. Yeah, it's high frequency, right? So it's picking it up. Even with my voice, if I'm close enough to that probe, it actually starts picking up my voice. Hmm. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It's nice. Uh, you know, if I get a second later, I'll show. Well, you, you got to keep in mind, attached to that probe is an is a is an inductor sensor, a, a coil sensing sensing the tiniest vibrations right. hitting the metal on the tip of that probe. Yeah, you don't necessarily. Right. And I mean, aerial vibrations too. You know. Yeah, yeah, it picks it up. I've seen a guy Something hook a speaker it. to it, and it was able to pick it up like a microphone. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
essentially that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, you got the vibration and that goes through a coil and a magnet. It produces electrical currents. Is that, You're talking about the oscilloscope, uh, right? No, yeah. I'm talking about a, just a speaker. You know, the speaker could actually create a signal for you. Since that I mean, earlier, you, were, you guys were talking about the oscilloscope, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, no, but it's kind of related to it because you, there's a coil, like you said, inside the probe, right? So it doesn't actually physically have to be attached just in the proximity of the device. It's going to pick it up. Yeah. Well, I've seen a guy yeah. take, take the, the little speaker and he connected it directly to his oscilloscope probe and mm -hmm. it he struck a uh, tuning fork and it showed up all over his oscilloscope exactly the correct frequency. Yeah, yeah because I the got speaker it. is a coil with two ends of that coil are, are attached to the diaphragm of that speaker. That's yeah. right. Transmits the vibrations. It's the most basic advice. Uh, I'm sorry, the most basic device that people do not uh, grasp. And I, I include myself in that, you know, until not far recent from today. But uh, yeah, it's just a coil attached to a, a, a paper diaphragm. Yeah. There's nothing complicated about it. Like the can thing yeah. with the rope. It's exactly. pretty much the same yeah. thing, just a little bit more yeah. uh, well put together <laughs> yeah yeah well it's using faraday's law right you know you vibrate or move a magnet in a coil you generate electricity right yeah so the coil just 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 transmitting the vibrations everywhere you look you know they're just yeah. using it for it's that a, you know it's convert well it's doing the uh from the physical vibration into electrical conversion right that creates, your 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 right? chips or whatever translate that data for you that's right but the oscilloscope picks that all up. I love the oscilloscope. It, it's handy for so many things. Yeah. They translate the uh, voltage differences in the coil. And yeah, I think my probe is, uh, it goes uh, times 1, times 10, times 100, I believe. That's, so you that's, can the, yeah. that's the best you can get right there. They don't have, I don't think there is yeah. a 200, is there? No. No, I've never seen a 200. I know it goes to 100. Right. So it's a little switch on the probe itself. You can flip it, you know, depending on, you know, the, how how much power you're putting in. It's into been so it. long since I actually worked with a, a uh, you know, a full-scale scope. I have the, yeah, I gotta I worked with the little handheld ones. I think they only do times 10. Yeah, mine goes up to 100, I believe, times. That's times 100, mine. right? Yeah, so the handheld ones only do times 10. If you want times 100, I think it looks like you got to get the... Uh, you need the full-size one, yeah. The full-scale yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. But times 10 is yeah. what you use for just about everything, isn't it? Oh, you could use time 10, too. Just get the calculator and multiply that times 100, and you can figure yeah, out... Yeah, I, uh, I got the latest uh, hand-tech uh, oscilloscope. It's a two-channel. It also has a signal generator built in it. Uh, full mm. mapping and recording capabilities in it. Beautiful digital screen. Um, it's nice, like for a modern. And it, actually, one of my Patreons bought it for me. It's a three hundred dollar oh. machine. Wow! So he actually bought it for me and sent it to me <laughs> via yeah. UPS. I was like, "Holy cow! This is beautiful!" I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." I, I got the, uh, the cheaper version of that of the hand tech. I just got the you know two hundred fifty dollar version. Is that so. the brand Hand Tech? Yeah, Hand Tech. Yeah. Is that no, like I have a, the, the brand you guys prefer, or? Well, it was just the one he gave me, so I didn't really have a choice in the matter. But you know, I'll accept any you know things you know somebody sends me out of their their kindness, right? Uh, yeah. Mine's the DSO model, the DSO model. Nice. Hand Tech DSO sixty. 53 or something. I've got it in my uh, back room there. Like, yeah, I would have yeah, saved I, a lot of money on a signal generator just having it integrated. Yeah, it's an incoming built message in it. from Crypto, if you want me to read it. Oh, okay. He said, uh, real quick, I'm putting together a real science free Energy Friday stream after this if you want to join in. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, he's planning on being part of Mike's account, but only six people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm kind of. I'm, yeah, I'm limited. So if you guys after here want to jump over to Bernie's and uh, do a show with him, uh, you know. Yeah, well, I'll um, rate his stream. 
and then we'll just continue it as one long story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it Bernie yeah, or I, uh, the Jeremy? No, no, it's Bernie. No, it's Bernie, but uh, he, he Bernie. sent me a message, but I already had six people on, and it's like, oh, man, I can't even add him. Like, I, I just sent him a, a, a link late. I totally forgot. Uh, my apologies, but uh, yeah, so yeah, after here, after I shut down at 11, then you guys can, I might even jump on there too for a little bit and uh, carry on on Bernie's channel. I just, uh, I find, I like with six people, I find we get a, more of a thorough conversation. You know, I don't mind the big platform, but you know, the big platform, it gets really hard to actually make comments or, you know, Make your points is just it's jumping around too much but regardless you have to you know i'll go on uh, yeah so uh speaking of scope mike we... i wanted to mention something i have an old school scope from the 50s i'm pretty sure it works i'm going to bring that out on the camera and show you guys when i get access to it again it's at another location that'd uh, be but, cool it has yeah, they're a out there. transmitter also. It's those it's a it was for I think it's a thing that the army used to transmit. Yeah, yeah the to, army. Uh, oh, was it actually a transmitter or a oscilloscope? Yeah, yeah. On the back of it it has an attachment for an antenna to transmit um, and, and wow. an in input for your you know your your microphone. It also has, you know, it's a scope it's a oscilloscope and a radio transmitter built in one. That's Signal. cool. Wow. Old it's like you, the, the one you just got, the new model hand tech or whatever, signal generator built in. Yeah, mine's yeah. built in it, yeah. That means yours can also transmit a radio station if you wanted to. I don't know how many amps you got behind that, but. Uh, yeah, I, often I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, find out the amps and you know how far you can transmit. Probably within the FCC regulations. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, I get the FCC at my front doorstep. <laughs> no, I mean, if your amps are low <laughs> enough, you, you you're within the code. You don't have to worry about it. You don't try. Yeah. I think you can go like five miles. You see that little up. truck? Uh, by the yeah, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll have that guy in a black van with an antenna on it looking for somebody. right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> scanning for where's this frequency coming from. <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. only if you're on another frequency that's already uh, reserved from, you know. And well, I'm pretty. Oh, if you're over overstepping somebody else, within see, your range, see, that is. Oh, it doesn't matter. You hijack any radio frequency. That's federal mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, no, you're not <laughs> going to be able to do that unless the station <laughs> is close by you. Your your it, transmitter it, it, only has like two like, amps. It's not going to reach. You know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As soon as you hijack one of the owned radio frequencies that's violation of fcc code i don't know what how strict it is in the u.s i know in canada you that throw you in the brig it's pretty strict <laughs> here too yeah you mean you can't use uh the, the radio station code anyway no. if you're not oh, right? yeah you're right you're right you're, true. you're right about that yeah. you can. oh no 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 you do that in the UK, but you can you use can another frequency it. that's not registered as long as you don't go Does over it? 10 miles i think something like that <sighs> maybe i don't know exactly what you the have to have a license because i know somebody who got in trouble for broadcasting their own radio station locally yeah that's they called power run over 10 miles yeah. their, their transmitter had more than <laughs> 10 mile range old school that's, uhf that's or something, <laughs> something. yeah <laughs> back in the 80s that, yeah that's called uh pirate radio man yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah the, the truck go, coming down the street <laughs> with the uh, scanning for the signals <laughs> 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 they, they came to his door and they're like do you know anybody broadcasting a frequency? He's like, nope. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I want to do AM. I want to do AM. AM, there's no FCC with AM, I don't think. Uh, is there? Is oh, yeah. In that? Canada, there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. For AM. Any kind of. See, the government doesn't want people to have CB radio. Okay. CB radio is really starting to fade out, especially here in Canada. They don't want CB radio because the FCC cannot regulate it. Yeah, it's I like an CB. open band. CB is the way to go. Like even now, they're attacking ham radio operators in Canada. Yeah, they don't buy, want buy, it. buy a transmitter now while you still can. Yeah, well, that's it, right? Because like <clears throat> uh, like ham radio, you still have to have a license. 
but in Canada, I know they want to ban it. They don't want it here because of the fact that you could broadcast over the over the airwaves. Anybody who has a shortwave radio can pick you up. Right. Right. Like I remember back in the day, my father bought me once for Christmas. It was a regular AM FM radio, but it also had shortwave. And I could get stations in Germany and England and Switzerland, all are over all the planet, hmm, all over, all, right? Are all the bands regulated, every one of them? Yeah, they're licensed. In in your jurisdiction, yeah, you have to go under their FCC code. And it's I mean, what, about those, what about the, the truckers' radios? <clears throat> well, that's what, that's what we were saying about the CB radio. They want to get rid of that because they can't control it. There's no way to actually control CB. They don't want us communicating uh, open openly in any way. That's right. I mean, it, it's an open source it. communication platform, CB. There's it's, no it, it's, on called, it. it's, it's called transmitting tyranny is what it is. They want full control over the airwaves. That's yeah. tyranny. It's no different you know, than the Nazi days with Hitler and uh, his... Uh, his uh, well, what's the guy? there's actually... The, the propaganda guy. What's his name? Sterling or whatever. Right. There's a good movie. I, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix or on Prime. The movie's called Pirate Radio. It's about, these, it's about these group of guys that lived in Britain back in the uh, 60s when rock music was illegal to be broadcasted in Britain. So what they did was they got a boat and actually built an FM transmitter on the boat and started broadcasting rock and roll from the ocean. <laughs> so it's, um, no, it's a true, it's a it, it's a true story. You got to watch. Is that it. where the it's casinos got the radio. idea? What does the Which casino is, have to do with it? You know, they, they you know, down here in Florida, the casinos used to be uh, illegal, so they would go out on the boat to gamble. Now, yeah, kind of, yeah. So back in the fifties and early sixties, when rock and roll was illegal to be broadcasted on British radio. These guys got a ship together, put the uh, FM or AM transmitter on the boat and start broadcasting from the sea because they're out of the country technically at 200 nautical miles. So they started doing this and the British government eventually shut them down, but they got away with it for a while there. It was a good story. You should actually try to find it. It was called Pirate Radio. Well, when there's a boat, there's a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah but that's the thing with cb radio like if i had the chance now i would actually buy a cb radio for the fact that you could actually broadcast it it, it doesn't fall really under any fcc laws i don't know how it is in the u.s but i know here they, they have no way to control it there is no control over cb hmm. but if they find you use a uh Reserve frequencies. They, 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 they might, uh, might. Well, you just don't broadcast. You just don't broadcast your name. Yeah, my name is so and so. I live at this address. Right, it's the only way they can locate yeah. you uh, with AM and shortwave. But if you're using FM, they can triangulate you. Yeah, they can triangulate. I have a question. Yeah. Why don't you just uh, uh, apply for a license? I applied once. They gave it to me. I have the certificate for owning a radio signal. With, yeah, with it depends channel. where you live. I live in Houston, so they gave it to me. I applied for it. I waited for a few days, and then they sent me like the certificate of ownership for it. It wasn't that difficult. Is it free? Yeah, you just apply for it, and you put your real, real information, and they send it to you. I don't know if it's expired now, but yeah, if I had it before. Was it FM? Do you remember what it was? Uh, I don't. I I don't know. I didn't know. Probably how to, FM. I just followed the link and I threw the website and I put my information and I followed them. They sent, you know, they sent me the email. Texas is liberal though. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but I mean, it wasn't. I think if, if, if they were to control the media and information, Texas would be the last place to go, go down in that regard. Man, Cause it's the most liberal yeah. place on earth when it comes to, I mean, look at Alex Jones, you know, he's out of Texas. See? Like, you know, all, all the most liberal media is out of Texas. You know, here uh, it's open I heard, space. We can own I heard you saying it's different from uh, other places in Texas. Like, uh, so San, well, what's the name? Uh, sound something. Uh, the, 
But uh, you think it's really a liberal, but the other places are more open. Guys, I'm just with they, I'm you know, just gonna with, with rights and stuff. You know, like what do you call it? United gonna, States, uh, uh, rights. You know, the the constitutional stuff. That's what they're liberal with. I'm just gonna scoot out for a cigarette. I'll be right back. Okay. But uh, if you get caught, you know, with illegal drugs, that's not, you know, that's not what they're cool with. They're when it comes to like constitutional rights in Texas, that's the thing that they they are pretty pretty strong on that, more than anywhere else in the country. But uh, I the, wouldn't the state, say that you could go around, you know, with a marijuana joint and you know the, get away with no. it, you know. No, they're, they're bought out. The police are bought out. I've seen it with my own eyes. They protect certain places where they run the business. You see cops there. And the delivery needs to happen. They escort that person to wherever. That They're all bought out. They're all crooked. All of them. I don't even know if Texas has medical marijuana yet, do they? It's uh, like you could say, like in Harris County, you could buy, you could not, you're allowed to have marijuana with you, like I think less than a, maybe a gram or two or something like that. Yeah. You have to have a license for it? Nope, no license. <laughs> oh, then they're more liberal than Florida. Looks like Florida's more strict. Yeah, but you go, you go to Montgomery County. Uh, you know, it's not allowed. You have to buy the stuff from the store if you want it. Like the that, I don't know what it's called, but the other dispensary. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, dispensary. They're all over California. There's signs everywhere for this stuff. Yeah. yeah what is that? The dispensary. Yeah, they, they legalized marijuana in the United States recently. It's and called Delta. Something. Yeah, but the, the, in the United States, if uh, you get arrested by a federal cop, he, it's still illegal. Yeah. That's so the true. Laws, the, law, the laws, they overlap. And if, if a Canadian, if it, it's still illegal at the federal level, so if I, if I smoke weed all, all the time, not if you have a license. Doctor. Not if you have a medical license. Yeah, but if I don't, if I try, if I smoke weed all the time and I try to cross a border, I'll be, I'll be stopped because the border is. Uh, yeah, Europe, yeah. Europe doesn't have. Or you're in Canada, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Canada has medical marijuana or not. Or yeah, not. we do, but uh, if it's not medical, then you, you, you're screwed. You can't cross the border. Right. Yeah, you gotta have no. your license. I wouldn't bring pot to the border ever. Man, you I, wouldn't, I, you wouldn't I, need I, to I, with a license. Yeah, no chance you, of you that. You get it on the other side. Dude, I, right. I, I, with me on a plane, nobody said anything. I put it in little capsule pills, like the ones that are you, you, like you take apart, you throw out the stuff from there, you put it in the middle, and you capsulate them back, and you put them and look like vitamins. Nobody said anything. Yeah, that's just too much work. <laughs> but I did it. It worked. Yeah. Okay, but that was many years ago, many, many years ago, you know, so it could be, you know, security could have been much more lenient then, yeah. you know, yeah. Now well, here they don't, they don't care here, right? And I, I, I stopped doing all that, like all that stuff, um, you know. It was but but I'm, I'm wondering how could uh, Snoop Dogg w was able to, to get out of the United States to the Olympics? He has his own yeah. jet. He's got his own plane. <laughs> That's how. Yeah, but he, he, he can't he can't cross a, get out of the United States with all the weed that he Yeah, he can't get out of his own plane. No, no, you can't because as soon as you get there, if they want to search the plane, you get arrested because you're subject to the laws of where you went. Yeah. My bad. These hmm. guys are so rich at this point they could buy anybody off. You gotta hide it and then not let the dog smell it. The whole process there, and that stuff stinks like crazy nowadays. Because, well, at least here, they don't care. So it smells like high heaven everywhere. <laughs> well, uh, real quick, uh, I, I got to leave in a few minutes to it. drop my girlfriend off. It, if you put tomato juice right, on ben. you 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 like you disable the dog's scent. Like, they can't smell it. Once you put, like, rub it with tomato juice, they can't smell it afterwards. Huh. Yeah. So. Kind of like the skunk smell, huh? You just put the tomato sauce all yeah, over Yeah, yeah, it's the same, the same idea. Tomato <laughs> just kills a lot of the, the scents. Like, they can't even smell anymore. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I, I once had a trip one time, yeah, and I, I smoked a lot of pot, and then I got in my truck, and I was driving, and I just had to stop. It felt like I was in warp speed. The lights were coming by me. It was like a <laughs> 70s disco or something, man. It was like, wow! And I'm like, dude, I just got to pull over. I just can't do it. 
Like I'm going like two miles an hour probably on this street. And I'm going, <laughs> it's just not working, man. I just gotta stop. So I pulled over and man, I just waited until it's, it went away enough where I could drive again. It was bad. I should have never been there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was I Captain was... Kirk for a while, man. I, I was going warp speed. I, 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 I like I stopped all that stuff. Like, all, like Nathan's going to yeah. light up when he gets his uh, UFO running. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm, all I'm, I need, man. I have I'm, a UFO in the front yard and a cop, and I'm smoking weed. I'm, Don, you want <laughs> some, pal? For real, the yeah, he's like, I don't think oh, the cops okay. gonna see the weed. If anything, <laughs> UFOs are attracted to this stuff, they they really are. Like, if you know, I don't know, is it if some when the person's high, they they see them better because it alters the the mm. free because you know, in our natural state, we see the the regular spectrum, but when we alter our state a bit, we see it, you can unfilter spectrum. it, yeah, no, yeah, we see a different spectrum, so. I believe that they, you know, make it illegal because they do not want us to see that spectrum. And when uh, we, do, they call, you know, they call people druggies or they call them, they, men, they say they have mental issues or this until you catch it on a real video. And then nobody could say otherwise, like it's on a video. So it's not something that, you know, I, anybody imagined or. You know, well, the, if you look at the history of cannabis, it has been used by every culture in, in the history in documented history for medicine. You know, the ancients used to call it the Omnicure because it was useful for so many ailments. It, it cures cancer. Did you know that? It cures cancer. In some, in some forms, yes. It, it, it can treat some forms of cancer. Not yeah. all forms, though. I mean, what, it's, good enough, it's good enough for whatever forms it treats. That, that's right. It. At least from the scientific research, you know, maybe there's uh, more forms that we don't know about scientifically. Like based on the research, though, it does um, reduce the size of some. Quitting tumors. sugar cures cancer. Ca caffeine prevents <laughs> cancer a, a lot uh, as well. So uh, <laughs> just go ahead and drink coffee if you don't want uh, cancer. Not, not but uh, it just look at what your body does with cannabis. It stores it in the fat cells, whereas uh, other uh, substances, it pushes it out right away. You know, it utilizes it for a reason. Mm. <laughs> Promoting smoking or anything you smoke, you never have Alzheimer's. Did you know that? You, you you'll never have Alzheimer's. One one fact of you know, on for smokers, statistics say smokers do not, you know, get Alzheimer's. So you know. Not promoting it, but just it's a fact. Mm. They know. pretty much figure you had too much time and space already, so you don't need it in the elderly life. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> you already got enough time um, built up. Oh, oh, uh, one uh, thing that I found out cures cancer too is plum seed. Apparently, you dry it up, crush it up into small pieces. This guy, um, he's been on YouTube. Uh, he's been on a few podcasts. He had uh, stage four cancer. It was basically just riddled all over his body. He said he had about three months left to live. He got plum seeds and crushed them up, baked them in the oven, and then he started putting it in yogurt place. every morning. Consult but uh, yeah, no, but what I'm saying is there are natural methods, and apparently it cured him. Hmm. A lot of people have. Uh, jumped on his bandwagon and following him and there's been numerous account numerous accounts that people's cancers yeah. have been cured I give you my theory uh, on can I give, natural I give you my perspective on cancer it's coming from plant toxins done next it's a fungus it's a fungus Look, that's what cancer well breaks. fungus breaks down plants you know it's a plant toxin fungus is Part of the breakdown process of plant matter not not animal matter fungus does not break down animal matter no 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 plant matter yes that's interesting because uh when you get cannabis that is um tainted or not grown in a sterile environment oftentimes it'll give you a headache because it has fungus on it or mold it's unfortunate for those who love animals and don't want to eat them, but they are the cleanest source of food on this planet. 
I mean, it's the chain of life, but if we do it ethically, I don't think there's a, an issue there because, you know, we've evolved to eat animals, you know, That's animals the relay, Mike. Eat other animals. There's uh Mike, you got something there you want to show us on the screen? Yeah, that's the relay I was talking about. The sol uh, the solid state relay it uses a magnet and the huh. electromagnet core it uses the field that your electromagnet puts off to trigger it to move it uh, and to do the switching. So Scott, what are those uh double lines, those parallel lines on each side? Uh, the orange two long bars are just contact bars sandwiched in between two magnets, insulated between themselves and the magnets. So you don't. And at you know, the tips. At the tips, those are just those d black dots represent contact points. For like a battery uh, or something. It's a relay for contacts. So when it if 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 you play the video, it, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm playing the whole thing. Play the video. About fifteen minutes. And and if you have any questions, ask me. You know, while while I'm explaining. Uh, I gotta go drop off my girlfriend, but I'll be back in like ten minutes. But I'll still be watching. All right. So, so this is a relay. I'm gonna point out the parts in here first. I like to. This is a. Yeah. Well, what is the purpose? Uh, to um, the purpose of this relay is to be able to switch two power supplies into two loads in series. Two separate channels? Two separate channels? Two, yeah, it's a double source, double pole throw. Does that make sense? Um, it's, it's throwing two poles, the plus and the minus, on one source. At the bottom, if you look at the bottom to the left where it says in, plus and minus. Right. And then the bottom right, it says out, plus and minus. Well, that's when it when the magnet gets pulled down, those two bars pull down Come together. On those, right, on those four right. contacts. And they send your power from okay. the left to the right. And then the electromagnet will turn on. Okay, that's the default on position right there. So when you plug it in, it's on. And as soon as you plug it in, the electromagnet generates a field and it pushes the magnet up away from the bars at the bottom and disconnects the right. whatever load you had there and now connects the next uh, set of bars at the top to the next load so I, I i thought up this design here to be able to mechanically switch two coils in series not simultaneously in series and to do that uh, uh you know the flyback thing what are the expected loads oh so the relay contacts can be as big as you want them to be to handle, you know, whatever load you want. But I'm not going to be pulling a lot of load on this. I plan on using like a 500 ohm coil um, or, or more. I more. meant to I meant to ask you, uh, what are you doing uh, presently with your Newman motor? Because I know you made one. Yeah, I got it running, and now I'm just focused on uh, building a, a better stator pickup coil with more thickness to it and to put out a higher voltage. I was getting a Two volts on the stator coil that I did make for it, but that stator is not thick enough. It's about uh, it's about uh, a little under half an inch too thin for the uh, picking up the magnet that's passing by it. Because the magnet that passes by it is like one inch thick, so I need like a half inch thick stator coil to get the full uh, field. So you're going. So you have to go to like. Um an 18 gauge wire or even bigger no i'm gonna keep it thin so i can have more turns like 28 gauge i'm gonna keep it like that yeah you'll maybe... you'll, you'll get the you'll get the voltage but you won't have the current if you want more right. current then you'll have to go to bigger wire right and then you'll lose right. your voltage potential yeah i don't but... see it making a lot of current because it's a it's a slow frequency you know it's a sean's uh, uh sean's asking if you can demo your human motor and in, in the yeah you mean in the in here in the stream yard yeah yeah just uh turn your camera on it or something and oh I, it's not running now i have the video of it oh, that's all i got of it running oh okay if you got a video that's cool pop it up and all right hold on let me find it here so i'll let this play in the meantime 
Oh, Nathan, you were uh, you posted a video yeah, so today a, uh, about Newman, right? It's a relay. Yeah. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, I was watching that for a bit. And his function. He, he also. Is, oh, Nathan, did you know uh, uh, Newman came up with a uh, anti gravity device? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, what he did was he took a helium balloon, and he wrapped 30, 30 gauge wire around it, a lot of it, and he weighted the balloon down with the wire, so the balloon would be kind of sitting on the ground. Okay. And then when he start when he start pulsing about two hundred volts through those wires, the balloon came off the ground. It started levitating. Huh. And if he changed the frequency, like flip the poles. It would spin around 360 degrees. So, depending on how he pulsed that power, would manipulate the balloon in the air. Wow. So, it turned out if he scaled it up to say like a 30 foot, 40 foot balloon, hmm. uh, the lifting capacity was quite high. Gotcha. So, you might want to look that up. Joseph Newman any gravity machine you might be able to find some stuff on it that might help you with some ideas gotcha yeah i got a video of uh uh tom um bearden yeah and it was like the best understanding of like a middle between what he was doing and what uh oh what was his name hutchinson was doing and it was talking yeah. about the vortex and everything. I don't know if you caught that one. It was only yeah. like five minutes long, but it was yeah. like one of the best explanations I've ever heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. it everything, when you pulse power, it's going in a verticular motion. Electricity, like a perfect example of this is the ball bearing motor. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's two metal ball bearings with a metal shaft going through the two ball bearings. You have a positive on the one bearing and negative on the other one. And if you put, uh, say, six volts at, like, say, 10 amps in it, you can spin that shaft, and it will start running like a regular motor. Hmm. And uh, Chris Carson and Eric Dollard built it back in the mid-'90s. And to this day, Eric Dollard does not know how this thing spins. The only th thing he can, he can think of that comes anywhere close is the fact that when a charge is passing through a wire, it's going around the wire, but it's also a gyroscopic. It's in a spinning motion. So if you're applying current to a metal shaft with metal bearings, that current is spinning around the inductor constantly. Because it's on bearings, it actually forces that shaft in motion. And that's gotcha. why the ball bearing motor, right? It's always any kind of electrical current that goes through it and uh, on the, travels on the outside of the inductor is in a gyroscopic spin. Yeah. Hmm. So if that makes any sense. Yeah. Did you want to see that Tom Bearden video? It's like you it said, it's only like five minutes long. Yeah, we can watch it and uh, yeah, yeah, pop it up and I'll remove this. So I hit player. Uh, oh, you mean to stop it? You got, uh, did you uh, post it? On the yeah, it's oh, up okay. in the thing right now. Okay, I got it. Okay. Go back to it and hit play. Filled with electromagnetic waves going in, in bi directions. Pick a frequency, there's a wave going in one direction and a wave in the other direction. The wave that's going backwards is an anti-wave. It's a, it's a time-reversed wave. And the vacuum is structured. This potential, a vacuum is just potential is all it is. Uh, this potential is filled with a harmonic series of these waves. And so it structures spatially by bidirectional wave sets. And it structures vertically in terms of harmonics. Now... If you then invoke this structure and you do that with a nonlinear material and you put in one wave in the nonlinear material, that material will take from the vacuum that excess structure because it turns everything into a potential and it will put out 
multiple frequencies and harmonics. That's what nonlinear materials do. Interestingly enough, if you take time reversed waves and put in those harmonics, when they back up through, they will restore one wave. You can gather the energy and collect it and integrate it together and produce a single thing of much greater energy and lower frequency. And so what you have is the vacuum structures in frequency and spatially and the connection are waves. And by the way, these waves do not have to move at the speed of light. They can have much greater velocity. Now, the importance of Whitaker's work is that he showed that if you were to take sets of waves that you made on the bench, you made a wave and it's anti-wave, and you made the harmonic and it's anti-harmonic, you'd have to have at least one interval, one interval. In music, we would call that an octave, you know, from C to the next C, for example. If you had at least one octave or one harmonic interval, you would then have a structured vacuum. Now, you can build such sets as these any way you wish to, and each one of those sets is a special form that you can build on the laboratory bench. There is a set, for example, that contains the electromagnetic parts that generate typhoid. That's Kosnashev's work, and that's Kosnashev's death photons that have been shown to carry death and disease. That work has been duplicated in West Germany, or Germany now, and also has been duplicated in Australia and here in the U.S. It also explains the work of Antoine Priori, who built a machine under the proper scientific auspices and under rigorous testing on lab animals, which cured cancer and leukemia almost 100%. Some eminent French scientists that worked with him, it's still in the French medical literature. It was real, it existed, it was squelched. But what I'm saying is, if you use the Whitaker approach, you can now, for the first time, understand how Priori's device worked, because that's what it did. And he used a rotating plasma to make his phase conjugates. We didn't even know about the phase conjugate in those days. Today, we know that one of the things plasmas do, do under the right circumstances is phase conjugate or time reverse. And he showed that you can cure cancer, leukemia. You could just as easily set a pattern that would cure AIDS. Uh, he showed you could clean out clogged arteries. Um, you could uh, change the immune system, increase the immune system, bring it back up, which would be very valuable to AIDS patients, for example. For every disease, there is a pattern which causes the disease in this structure. For the cure to every disease, you simply take its pattern and time reverse it, and you get the precise electromagnetic antidote. You then put that inside a potential, as Whitaker showed how to do, and you treat the body with that, which is like very, you know, like normal electromagnetic radiation. It's not ionizing radiation. It's not nuclear radiation. Expose them to a rippling magnetic field, for example, with these embedded in the field. And you cure the disease. And that's the kind of medical treatment we ought to have, not this cut them and burn them and poison them type thing that we have now. And many of them are still dying with cancer and leukemia and AIDS. It would take about three years it would take a team of about 30-something people, facilities and so forth, in about three years, about $20 million a year to deliver the ability to do that kind of electromagnetic treatment. Cool. Did you uh, see Joel Legace talk about Tom Bearden recently? <laughs> oh, yeah, said, I've seen that, yeah. He flat out <laughs> said, hey, Tom's wrong. Did he yeah. just... Like Not that I understood uh, what's going on, but yeah, he uh, did. He did. Yeah. Do you understand what he was talking about, or I do? Is he saying like yeah. we, we can hmm. reverse the frequency? Something about linear material. Like Gerald does it with his core, with with, with his uh, coil. He's doing the same thing. He says it reduces the swelling and stuff right away. When he when he puts a certain frequency in one, I think it was fifteen hundred and one. And then, uh, what was it, 750 or so, the half of it, whatever it was. Uh, yeah. So he put that on the other side and then he put it in there and it, it took his knee swelling down like within a day. Yeah. Cause like, uh, Gerald's coils, if you look at most of his coils, there's no cores, it's all air core. Yeah. Right. That's what, and that's what Tom was just talking about. That same type of thing. It's a pattern. Mm -hmm. So, 
Anyway, that was it. He just what, what he was describing was basically like uh, my gravity flare on the vortex that's created in the center. It was talking about the same thing between magnetic fields and everything else. It just kind of right. struck home. Yeah. Not everything that Bearden talks about, I, I agree with. Some of the stuff, yes. But, you know, when he gets into the scalar technology that Russia was working on and all this stuff, I think a lot of it's just uh, folklore. But, you know, some of the, you know, a lot of the, you know, regular physics that, you know, Bedini was working on and Stubblefield and all that stuff. Yeah, that stuff's correct. But he does go a little bit out there. I think everybody <laughs> does a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know, I know Eric Dollard's not a big fan of him. Actually, he, he thinks he's done a lot of damage in a lot of ways. Because, like, I kind of flip. I, 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 I like to listen to everybody's story, you know. And you know, there's some stuff that I like Tom Bearden does, and there's some stuff I don't like what Bearden talks about. I think it kind of hurts his credibility in some aspects. Same with Dollard. You know, Dollard doesn't always see eye to eye with Ken Wheeler when it comes to magnetics, right? And uh, we, uh, Ken Wheeler has actually flat out said he thinks Eric Dollard's wrong in this one area. Hmm. You know, flat out tell you. So, you know, it's everybody has their ideas and what they feel is correct. And obviously, there's going to be discrepancies between two different people's theories, right? Right. I really like uh, the the idea of eliminating as much current as you can and and gathering as much potential as you can, putting it across well, you your use, your yeah, uh, and, load or your uh, or your storage. Right, that's where I think Newman I think is really right. It's you don't need uh, current to make a system work. You need voltage potential into a mass. Mass is where the horsepower is created. Didn't those That's little right swinging pendulum devices that you know people would buy and put on their desks and stuff? Doesn't that prove that what you just said there? Sure, it does. Most definitely, it does. It shows Energy you the the, the 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 what do you call that? The swinging the swinging mass uh, yeah. effect. Yeah, the pendulum. The pendulum. Uh, I guess there's the actually an effect, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're you're, you're transmitting uh, a voltage potential or a velocity or equal and opposite reaction. If it's in a mass, then that mass will increase the amount of power that's generated. Like that's why mass keeps like, the momentum for you, like a flywheel. Well, well, no, it creates the spin. You know, like say, like in Newman's motor, his his stator was like four thousand pounds. Okay, a lot of wire. So when he put 460 volts at 50 milliamps, 50 milliamps is nothing. But I'm going to get you to watch voltage, that right now. How many volts? 450? Okay. For 450, 460, he was working with, with his batteries. But they were only putting out 50 milliamps, very, very little current. It's the mass of the wire of the inductor that was creating the horsepower within the motor. That's so, 22 and a half watts. Yeah, so it's 20 watts, it's not a lot. It's enough I mean, to run that mass at, at bare minimum. I think that's what you need. To yeah, like it was, you know, 4,000 pound broker. He said, you know, you should have guy. pounds, yeah. He's turning a 4,000 pound rotor with 22 and a half yeah. watts. It's so exactly. that's 0 0.05 so, times 450. Yeah, so that pretty much concrete proof that his theory is correct because technically speaking if you were to do that with a regular electric motor of that size it would it would burn it would 20 burn watts the battery not enough. within shouldn't seconds be enough. It, should, 20 watts should not be enough to, to turn over that much weight Four thousand yeah, pounds exactly right so it's the energy to mass that's his theory energy to mass ratio he used potential so, to do it, not not the wattage. The wattage was right. just there to get the potential to show itself across the load, which was the drive coil. Exactly. That's exactly it. Hey, I mean, Gerald's on the chat. 
<laughs> there's the mic. There's the pulse motor Sean wanted to see. I put it up in there. Oh, okay. Here. I'll put it up. That ran for four hours because the, the nine volt battery that was powering the Arduino went went dead. But it went from twenty seven and a half volts on the source down to about twenty five or something like that. And I think it would have kept spinning to like yeah. twenty two volts. Because that's why uh that's why my uh, renegade device, you know, I could run it with dead batteries and the thing will just run hours and hours and hours it's because i got a large inductor and a high voltage potential not current because those those batteries that i have they were all like they're nine volt batteries but they're all like seven volts six volts but if you put multiple together maybe the most i'm getting 20 to 50 milliamps out of all those little batteries because they're all dead but it still runs the motor for hours on end, just runs and runs and runs and doesn't stop. So it proves the, uh, Newman's theory is correct. It's voltage potential into a mass. No, well that, that's, that coil driving, that's not exactly the, completely Newman. I mean, it's got a lot less impedance than the Newman coil had. I mean... It's yeah, got the 370 Newman's ohms. That coil is 370 ohms. Yeah, so like what, Newman says gauge. to get the, yeah, Newman says to get the effects that he was getting. Your 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 uh, core has to be about 270 pounds. So yeah, and he had it. Really his coil had an impedance that had to be over a thousand ohms. <laughs> Probably for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that means what? What? Yeah. So he had 450 volts to get through that ohmage. Yeah. yeah. So he, he probably had like 3,000 ohms on his coil. That's a pretty high impedance coil. Sure. And it's sure not it cheap is. to make that either. That's why I only no. was able to oh. get the 370 ohms on mine. <laughs> I'm not going to spend all Could that you money imagine? on a coil. You know? yeah. No. Could I, you imagine I can. how? I can. I can. Because I've, I've, I've worked like, with a lot of copper wire. Miles yeah. and miles. Could you there. imagine? You imagine how much four thousand pounds on a on a rotor would take? How long that would take to wind that thing? That's <laughs> yeah, insane. one They're one probably... you know two watt spool is about you know half that weight or less. Five like pounds. and it's all and all that wire was recycled. Like he had to have sources of copper wire through the yin yang, <laughs> you know, to accumulate that amount of copper. That's like see the problem with that motor is it would be the cost. You know how much copper is there? It's a lot of money. Yeah. So all the stuff that he had was definitely like in, you know, surplus shops and you know, junkyards. What did you say the gauge was again? I can't remember exactly what gauge he was using. He said lift wire, no? Was so it lift wire? I, it, it's possible. And that's even harder to find, lift wire. Well, that's even finer. And and it's fine wire too. Litz wire is fine. Like that's an enormous amount of. I wire. think he mentioned like, that if you can find Litz wire, it's the or something like that. It's probably the op optimal multi-stranded wire. Yeah. Because you could just wire them in one end all the, to do your series thing. Yeah. But like, if I were going to make one, I would make the minimum requirement of the amount of. You know, windings, but still 270 pounds. That's a lot of copper, man. That's a lot of copper. Yeah, there's only two and a half pounds here. Hmm. Yeah, and that was like 40 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Well, he must have <laughs> some dough behind him, or maybe he just been saving. But don't, don't for forget. Well, yeah, but don't forget, he was building these motors back in the early mid 80s. Right, so copper was a lot cheaper. Yeah, it was cheaper that, back that then. Right. Yeah, that's the 1980s. He was building those motors, hmm. like the big one, the big Eureka. I think he built that around 2008, 2009 timeframe. Yeah, but it's true. I fully so. agree with he what he said. If you can get a yeah. large mass inductor yeah. without creating any, I believe he even said this without creating any shorts or opens yeah. in it. <laughs> I think I remember him saying that once. Yeah. Then you have yourself a free energy machine. 
yeah, something like, like that. He, very he, simply, because you have the mass of, uh, of of the coil, you have the all these turns. It's 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 energy to mass conversion, right? It's, That's what it is. It's energy to mass conversion. Everybody thinks power has to have amps behind it. That's actually it's a wide plane centrifugal, uh, a wide plane vortex is what you're creating with that coil. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the field he was creating in that thing? It was a wide, a wide field, a very big field, very strong one too because of that voltage. Yeah, very brief too, also because it was pulsed, right? Mm -hmm. Like he made a lot of motors that were like you know the size of say like a coffee table and stuff like that, or the size of a kitchen table. You know, a lot <laughs> smaller, but still, in scale wise, he's still pretty big. You know, yeah. uh, but here comes down to the problem of practicality, right? To actually build a commercial unit that you could use to power your house or something like that, the thing would cost fifty grand. You know, to build it. The idea is right, but you know, you have to be able to scale that down to a point where you can still get the effects. He says two hundred seventy pounds. Okay, that's that's doable, right? You know, you could say like your air conditioning unit outside your house. You could probably I, build. I have a theory size. why you can't scale that. Effect. I have a theory as to why you cannot scale it down, and it won't work scaling it down, because the planet's a certain size. This thing, the mass is important to tuning into the rotations of the planet. And somehow, yeah, you need that to happen for it to. Keep rotating. Yeah. So, like, it's if you're doing it in by air, or it's being tuned in in by uh, electromotive force that the planet has. Yeah. Yeah. And you so need the mass. Me, you need the mass to, to get there because you have to get close to the size of this planet that you're trying to tune into. If you're like yeah. at a scale of a uh, what's it called a quantum scale compared to the planet, which is what a little Newman motor would be, which is what this one is. Right. It's, it's at the yeah, quantum scale wise. compared to the actual planet Earth. You know, you have to right, get right. above the quantum scale. You have to be within the same, uh, you know, uh, plane of existence. I think, you know, whatever. Well, <laughs> you if you if you build a, you know what, if you build a motor like at the utility level, that's you know, thirty or forty tons. You know, okay, yeah, I think you got something there, and you could actually feed that into the grid, right? Right, and something with that kind of mass with rotational um, velocity on a planet that has, you know, whether it's flat like, or you, round, it still has rotational velocity. Yeah, can you imagine, uh, you know, that thing actually working, you know, just seeing this 50, 000, you know, 50 ton machine spinning like that? I wonder, uh, I wonder how much power that would actually put out. I'd be very curious to see. But then again, that's that's a pulse DC. Now that's going to get remodulated into 60 hertz at 120 volts, you know, in order to put that through into the grid system, right? Right, right, right. No, well, the, the idea is to, to spin the shaft with pulse DC and generate your AC with the spinning shaft or the rotational locomotion. You can, like... Instead of using a river or air, you use DC pulses to spin your uh, alternating alternator, your AC generator. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. You know, I don't, I don't think there's any other logical direction. There might be other directions, but I'm not seeing them. I see the pulse DC as being the most efficient way to. Not only keep solar wind generators rotating at a slow speed so that they never actually stop, which is a right. great a great use of a DC pulse, you know, uh, right. things like that. That's what I see DC pulses doing, and, you know, and the same thing for AC generators. You can drive your 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 analog uh, 360 degree uh, torque. AC generator with a DC pulse and a permanent magnet uh, setup. These uh, brushless DCs in your air conditioner. So 
Now, yeah, because they, yeah, they want to yeah. see because you'll buy it because it'll save you power in your electric bill. You, you know, and that's right because it saves power and you get the same and you get better, actually, better flow of air too than the uh, AC. The AC uh, is not it's supposed to be a motor. Uh, from what I understand, Tesla never designed the AC uh, generator to be a motor, like, period. But he went along with it because everybody wanted a motor. And yeah. and I don't think permanent magnets and DC motors were quite there yet. Uh-huh. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think they had enough, uh, you know, magnet, magnet tech back in his day to make DC motors like they do today, which were everywhere now. They were around for a long time, but they weren't used like uh, AC motors are used widely. And they just guzzle power like, you know, like an eight-cylinder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it's always, uh, it, it, because when the ground comes back, it's fighting its own field. So it's always in this electromagnetic tug of war, right? No, it's They're just really a very efficient motor. I mean, it's it uses a lot of power for not needing permanent magnets. And so yeah. when you go with DC, you can use permanent magnets and supplement the power that an AC motor would have to generate to be a motor. Right. So the See, AC the best system method. was never supposed to be uh, for a locomotion. Yeah. And Tesla stated yeah. that. Yeah. I think the he best... Said it was for, he said uh, it was for power generation, not for... Yeah. The other way around, yeah. which is like, I, th I think the best method that I've seen is the Steinmetz Dynamotor. His Dynamotor? Yeah, I, I thought he came up with the AC motor. Didn't who's he? Steinmetz? Yeah. No, no he, no, he, no, Tesla came up with the AC motor, but Steinmetz basically perfected everything that Tesla built. Yeah. So, um, you know, he was basically the head of the research division for GE. And, you know, basically had an unlimited bank account as far as research, right? So, uh, you know, like the AC motor and numerous stuff that Tesla put out, he, you know, put in mathematical formulas and worked out all the bugs. And uh, he was able to make something that was, quote unquote, commercially available to the masses. And that's what Steinmetz did, right? Yeah, I remember watching so that documentary on it. Wait, you said Sorry. photovoltaic? What 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 does Steinmetz do? Photovoltaic? Oh man. Or did I mishear you? Mike, you there? Yep. I'm free? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm uh, sorry, I was reading something on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I get a little sidetracked. <laughs> Say that again. So Steinmetz perfected the motor eight and and Tesla came up with the design for it. And so right. made it yeah. commercially available for everybody. Yeah, yeah, a lot of switching devices, motors, generators. Uh, he, uh, I believe Steinmetz had over two hundred, uh, sorry, over three hundred and seventy patents to his name before he died. Yeah, actually, I remember that part. more than, yeah, more than more. He actually had more patents than Tesla. Where, see, like. Yeah, you know, don't discredit Tesla. Tesla was a real engineer with real mathematic background and all this stuff. But I think Steinmetz was just at a little bit higher level of the mathematics. So, um, yeah, like him and Tesla, they they worked together on some stuff and they did do collaborate on some stuff as well, right? Yeah. You know, and I remember but, we worked with Edison and stuff like that. Uh, Steinmetz did. Well, yeah, Steinmetz worked with Edison. Tesla also worked with Edison. That ended in disaster. You know, the Edison and Tesla started their war, right? Yeah. And then, uh, then um, uh, Westinghouse came into the picture and swept up Tesla. And then, you know, the the war of the current started with DC and AC. So, and we all know who won that war. So. Well, yeah. it would have been better for the AC to go across the big lines and then DC to be in houses. It would have been a lot better that way. It would be easier right now because of the conversion that we do right now 
everything converts to DC for the motors in your house. It would have been easier just to run the DC here in your house. That's right. Yeah. But at that time, you know what? Uh, Tesla was already uh, in, you know, uh, good relations with uh, Westinghouse. You know, Westinghouse, he was very much a capitalist mind, right? And uh, he already made his billions on the uh, braking devices for trains. So that's pretty much where he got a lot of his money. And then also JP Morgan, he was that evil guy behind the curtain orchestrating all this kind of stuff and he knew in the end that you know edison was going to get screwed and so was tesla i think jp morgan was like the wizard of oz behind the scene right yeah who knew that who who knew it in the end was it was it edison knew that or no well jp morgan JP was morgan. orchestrating all this stuff he yeah, knew in the you end. know oh yeah he had all this planned you know it, See, back in those days, they had nothing but patent wars. It was World right. War Three, World War Three going on with Tesla and Edison, uh, patent war after patent <laughs> war, and then it got even worse when then Marconi jumped in there with the radio, and Tesla says, "Oh yeah, that's a nice radio, but you're using fourteen of my patents to make that radio," yeah. and that started another huge war. Like it was like. It was World War Three in the in the didn't, courthouse. Didn't Marconi and all that stuff, all those patent wars, whatever, start around the World War One? Yeah, that was right around World War One. Yep, yep, yep. And those guys uh, were busy uh, dealing with that the, those patent wars. Oh uh, yeah, it, it was constant, nonstop. You know, Tesla was in court so many times. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a lot of backstabbing. And then you had Marconi saying, oh, yeah, I invented the radio. Meanwhile, he's using 14 of Tesla's patents to make that radio. And then, you know, Tesla, in the mind mindset that he had free-spirited, he says, okay, you know, just let him do his thing. Let him make his radio. Let him do his thing. But in the end, I want to be known as the guy who created those components for the radio. Yeah, okay, what did you say? He said something. By, you know, he said well, the future thought, is mine. Before he said that, well, he said something else. Well, he also said Marconi's a jackass too. But well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like you know, there's a you know, Tesla wasn't the guy that really got mad a lot. But when you did piss him off, he would make some pretty outlandish uh, comments, and uh, Marconi was one of them. There was a couple times he got pretty uh, heated discussion with him. But, you know, in the end, after Tesla dies, I think it's two years after he dies, Tesla gets awarded as the creator of radio. Yeah. Well, what, good, what, what good is that after the guy's been dead for two years? Yeah. When, when he got mad, didn't he, like, yeah, throw stuff that. across the room sometimes? Who's that? <laughs> Tesla. All of us? Tesla? Is that you, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be all of us throwing things running. across yeah. the room. <laughs> no, I just remember that tidbit from uh, Chat GPT fed it back, and sometimes you know you can't like trust the AI. Yeah, not Windows ninety eight. <laughs> yeah, it's like sometimes it says sometimes uh, it, when Tesla felt frustrated that people weren't understanding his theories, or uh, uh, he would get so angry he would throw stuff. <laughs> huh. I don't I know. Could, about I can relate. I never heard that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the first time I ever heard that one. I didn't know he ever threw stuff across the room. It, it might be fake. I don't know. Like it, it was through the chat AI. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, and maybe they, they start this information with the AI as well. Like well, look, they, you know, I was he, thinking the same thing, Phil. Tesla is because when I looked nothing up, short of a mad scientist. Okay. Well, when I looked up uh, information on Tesla for my preliminary research for divine science, I found a lot of information regarding his articles in. Um, it wasn't the oh, abstinent, was you know. You got to let the steam out somehow. But but anyway, the, the point is, when I went back and asked the same questions, it didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tesla, I think he was abstinent, like he didn't, you know. Well, no, mean? apparently, no. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I was I watched, I listened to one guy, a researcher on him. He said pretty much his social, um, social behavior ended at about forty. He says that after 40, there was basically nothing there. 
So, you know, you did have relationships and stuff like that, but it, it ended very early because he got so engrossed in his work, right? You know, it just became everything in his life. So, yeah. Did you know also but, that, uh, did, did you know that with the AI, if, if the AI says something and then you say, you say, no, that's wrong because, uh, because of this and that, the AI will confirm what you're saying because he, he doesn't want to offend you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it never used to do yeah. that though. It when I was first using like Deep AI, it never used to do that, but now it does. So you guys are yeah. using Snowflake AI, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, God that's hilarious! Snowflake AI. <laughs> I, I just want yeah, to it's... tell me the truth. I don't care if it hurts my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> In fact. If you hurt my feelings, you're better off. You know what I mean? To get an honest but conversation. AI, the uh, uh, largest uh, misinformation agent out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's it's could be. Be. Oh, yeah. Right. Could be. AI was doing the uh, the bot spamming in the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, it's linked with Microsoft, so don't worry. It's going to get into the disinformation tangent. <laughs> Yeah. AI, AI was okay. doing all that bot spamming, you know, on the chats, bots pretending to be people. See, see this is uh, where technology starts being used in a bad sense. And that's the, that's the problem with I worry about AI. I think in a lot of ways, the, uh, in a, I think in a lot of ways AI is fantastic. Yes, but you know it could also be used for a bad purpose too, and that's what you know I fear the most about AI. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it's back to that spamming. You see, it gets <laughs> to, to, to disinform us. That's that's uh, that's how it, uh, that I can I can guarantee you it's going this way. <clears throat> yeah, it's like it, it's no different than our government. They act the same way. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like the deep fakes now with the AI what? making uh, images of you know a fish with a dog's face. You know. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, but, AI. You know, when, when, you know, but it, it boils down to the actual, like the internet wasn't even made for us. It was done by, you know, the early uh, predecessor to DARPA, right? So but the internet? The internet, yeah. Because the internet, the first FTP protocol that was actually in operation was 1970. Interesting you should say yeah. that, Mike, because uh, Facebook wasn't even made right. for us either. It was made for uh, Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was it was supposed to be a closed circuit social media network for mm -hmm. the uh, for the university. And then somebody right. like Zuckerberg right. came in and mm. you know, well you yep. know the rest. <laughs> yeah, he stole the technology and ran with it. Yeah, he stole the Facebook code and went to California, got some investors and uh, started his own business with that. And now he now he shadow shadow bans half the people that are on there. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it's probably like a techno right feudalistic platform, you know. I, I get more stuff about this woman running for president than I ever did about anyone else in my life. It just keeps a text going messages too, screen. Nathan. I've been getting bombarded with the text messages. For God's sakes, man, just let it go. Just show both <laughs> sides and be done with it. It's getting kind they need of to give up on me. They need to give up on me. I'm not voting. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dr. Shiva invented email, right? He's running for president. Every four years, I vote for one of my kids. I <laughs> have it. And it That's adorable. Yeah, because you know, log Do you really do that? Data. I do. I, every four years, I vote for one of my kids. I've already voted for two. <laughs> the third one is for the age of 18. So forever, they will have a presidential vote. Forever, on record. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Run on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I request. Uh, uh, and I'm and pretty sure the kids would do a better job than our governments right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you think it's if they, pretty... like somehow, if there is really an, an, an AI, an intelligent system, it would uh, probably uh, monitor that kid for life to see if they're really worthy of a presidential position. And it will probably landscape their life. For them to achieve that point, because you know. Well, yeah, well, I mean, what do you think the what do you think the social insurance number is? It's our uh, digital identity. 
Yeah. That's right. Canadian social insurance number? It's like the social yeah, security. Yeah, in, in, yeah social yeah, security. Might well in the US. Have a barcode on us. Yeah, that's right. You might as well slap it right on our forehead. Stamp your ass as a baby. Just boom. There you go. Put a, that's put a QR are. code. Okay. Do, do you, you need a reason to cry? When a baby's born, they they stab their heel uh, to test something. That disease is called the Ashkenazi disease. But the Ashkenazi disease is for a very uh, minority group in, in the world. I mean, like a really, really small minority group. But they still stick everybody, whether you're Chinese, American, or Indian, or whatever, you know. But it's, yeah. it's a, the, the characteristics of that people that carry the disease have red hair and green eyes. No, yeah, well, uh, Dr. Shiva talks about the Ashkenazi and all, yeah, that, all that stuff that you're into. Everybody. I haven't even. They, it's enforced by the government for that testing to happen. You cannot refuse it. Why? Because there's billions of dollars of funding for that test to happen. And somebody pockets that money. Although, really, if you don't, if you don't have the genetic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like the genetics for green eyes and red hair, you shouldn't even be tested for that. Why, why would somebody that is like, let's say, African yeah. American or Oriental be tested for that? They definitely don't have that. Do you, you understand? Mm. But they still, by, by law, they all have to be tested for, for that disease. And, and it's like billions of dollars go where? We don't know for that. It's all a scam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I missed it. Which disease was it they were tested for? It's called Ashkenazi something like like. I haven't the only, even heard of that. Isn't isn't that a Jewish um, sect? Yeah, only. I'm, 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 and now they're calling it a disease. I don't know. It's, they say the Ashkenaz people. It's a Jewish tribe. It's like, yeah, it's, listen, the people that can carry like that have that disease. So if you listen, if you go into a, a, a psychologist's office nowadays with mild anxiety, and you come out with bipolar and schizophrenia and all this BS. Like they try to push pills on you, they try to. Uh, it, it's yeah. all a monetary thing. It's an and it's an incentive yeah. for profit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if if you're not part of that that minority group, then there's no way you're gonna have it. Why Why would an Oriental person need to be tested for that? For example. Yeah. 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 It's like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, why even come up with such a stupid idea like testing for something like that in the first place? Exactly. Let alone, yeah, and you know, this, put the heel stick when the baby is is born. This is what they test for. This is it. Uh, my belief, it's you know, it's more than that because the heel has the when the baby's born, like it has the the fresh blood. It has like the the stem cells. Are you talking they, about when they prick yeah. your heel? For, yeah, and they keep. I'm, I know what that is, right? Biogenics for life. You know, they keep that you know sample for for as long as you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, they keep it in running in cryogenic units, and I don't know how. Son long. of a, huh? Son of Maybe a they're man. creating their own little Ark of the Covenant. You know, they got all the yeah. money in the world. Want to hmm. apply science to the our whole money, world. The tax money. How how if, if you like how quantumly entangled to your own DNA? And if like, they, I don't like the well, idea. Maybe, of yeah, maybe they're using it to control data, us through some kind that. of technology. Right? I guess you're I, saying, yeah. That is the. <laughs> In these because you are qu quantumly entangled like a signal generator they stress your dna you could probably in real life be stressed if they or even put, clone yeah, you. they have your bio signature yeah because they, they, you know, they can clone you sure. if that's true if they took our you saying when everybody's born they take a blood sample yes they do yes they and do they how long have they been doing ice. that wow they, i since I had the, my first kid in 2004, I know that, but I don't know more than that. But I'm 100%. It's been done at least 10 to 15 years prior. Maybe longer. Why don't they test us for something useful like being an Indian? I'd love to go on a reservation without a bunch of people around. Yeah, you know I mean, do my own thing. I have no neighbors around me. You know what I mean? Get me some money from the casino. I can, I, that's useful. <laughs> Get all my blood you want. Tell me that I'm Indian so I can cash in. Oh, uh, Nathan and I will be passing around the peace pipe. Nathan? Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, I go out in my chonies and get some peace pipe <laughs> action on, man. Follow do, some, do some dancing with some paint on my face. You got it. Dude, why don't you fall in love with a Native you know, American and you get the same perks? Yeah, well, it's already <laughs> too late for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, just a hypothetical, but yeah, I mean, 
there are there are other ways around what you want if you want really to pursue it it could happen i i swear my brother's an indian he goes out with no shoes on man it's 120 outside <laughs> he just walks yeah. around like it doesn't affect him at all had long hair wears a bandana like willie nelson you know what i mean and the guy's just like you can literally start hearing indian music as soon as he's walking down the street it's absolutely yeah. insane at least that maybe that's just in my head but well, as long as he doesn't look like Cheech, as long as he doesn't look like Cheech and Chong, you're okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> he once he once threw a uh, oh my god a sledgehammer at the back of my tire with those handheld ones because I, I guess I told on him or something to my dad and he, he got in trouble. So here I am riding my bicycle, right? He got mad. He threw this big old sledgehammer at my bike. He hit the back wheel and bent it. And then he took out a blow dart gun and shot it at me and shot me right <laughs> in my arm. I'm thinking, my God, the Indians are attacking. I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's just my brother down the street screwing with me. Your, yeah. Nice brother. <laughs> yeah. I had a paper, strange family, paper blow man. Dart. Is it the paper yeah, it blow was, dart? Dude, it was literally a nail that he had taken and he wrapped some paper around it, put it yeah. in the pipe, and then boom, right at you. Yeah. And shot me right oh, yeah, in my arm. Work. Stuck right in. Yep. Yeah. I oh, yeah. So. They use them to hunt birds. <laughs> I got a lot of my brother here. made. My brother made one years ago when we were kids. He got you know, the tubes that they use for the towel rack. Well, he got yeah. an aluminum tube. Made a dart, put a, a tiny little nail in it. He shot the thing once and went right into concrete. Yeah, it's crazy mm. the power you get. Stuck. Oh yeah, my brothers used to take shotgun shells with those pipes, man, and they just take a hammer and whack the back of it and let it shoot out the other end. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that was a crazy house, man. We, you know, five boys, you get you get a lot of stuff. We used to go out with my dad <laughs> nail gun. Pull back the safety on them, you know what I mean? Tie it back oh, with some wire. Oh man, that's dangerous. They that's dangerous. drinking over there, man. Oh man, they shoot, <laughs> try to shoot birds as they come by, and who knows where all this stuff landed. But man, they sure tried Dude. everything. My I brother see. shot himself in the ankle with it, and my other brother oh. goes, Well, let's go get the whiskey from the house, and we're just gonna pour it on there, and we're gonna yank this thing out for you. And then yeah, the thing when my like, mom came home, I had to bring him to the emergency you know? room to get it fixed. So, and then, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Explain that one to the First, doctor. Oh yeah. I used well, to be, it's like the on planet. Like if there's mischief, I was there. Like you, you name it. I was there. I one time th made, people thought like, there was an earthquake. So my grandparents building used to be on uh, concrete poles, you know, like, and then there's like um, a piled uh, flooring underneath. So I drilled little holes with a screwdriver, you know, big, like little fire crack, you know, those little fire crackers in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I got little all cherry bombs. Kids, whipped them with lighters. Yeah. And I, said, I mean, I put like maybe a hundred of these in these little columns, concrete columns. And I said to, to all of them, I said, when I count to three, all of you light up. And they said, all right. So I said, run. One, two, three. <laughs> and all of them lit up the little and it went boom and like the building shook my god oh. I, like everybody in the building people were coming down like people half dressed half this you know like and it was and i stood there and i thought it was the funniest thing everybody like got so <laughs> i literally had to everyone was throwing their shoes at me because you know like, it wasn't an earthquake but when you're up in that high and you hear that like you know like you know yeah down and the building is shaking everybody thought it was an earthquake but by the time they came downstairs they realized it wasn't guess who was in the trouble of their life me yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the funny the funniest thing the funniest thing we ever did my father this is going back years ago uh he took one of those firecrackers that make a huge bang when it hits the sky well instead of putting it upright he put it upside down into the garden so he stuck the top of it in the ground. So he lights this thing off. I'm about 10 feet away. Boom. It makes a crater. I, I kid you not. Probably about four feet in diameter in the garden. 
because it, it launched into yeah it launched into the ground <laughs> and then right. came out it I launched a stone it launched a stone or a rock that was in the garden and hit me boom right in right between the eyes knocked me out cold i was on the ground but uh, oh, yeah. fire wars aren't fire wars illegal in canada what's that uh, aren't fireworks illegal in Canada? <laughs> Busted. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, they're, no, they're not illegal. Illegal. Okay. No, Plus only in certain areas. Fireworks. But maybe before they weren't, but uh, these days they are. Well, I I know in some cities now. they are. I know in um, Brampton, the city of Brampton, that's not too far from me. It's totally outlawed there. They can't do it because people are shooting each other with it. <laughs> oh no yeah they are oh yeah they're picking them up and shooting their friends with it so, <laughs> what it, yeah oh yeah oh, my oh yeah God. what is going so, on <laughs> so this, yeah the city of brampton they've totally banned fireworks they all yeah, like bottle rockets <laughs> Here it's only banned like uh, uh inside the city but if you're outside the city and there's no trees it's okay well, you know, like it was not uncommon that she, you know, during, you know, uh, you know, Canada Day or whatever, or Victoria weekend, you go out buy fireworks and you put them in your garden, shoot them off in your backyard. Well, now, you know, these idiots come in and they decide to have some fun with it instead of shooting it in the air, they shoot it at their buddy. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, grown ups or kids? Both. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> All uh, of the somebody's, above. Somebody's yeah. gonna win a Darwin Award. Some of these clowns put them in their butts, man. And you see all the sparks yeah, coming I've out. I've seen of that. <laughs> 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 yeah, you get third, they're crazy. You get third degree birds. Oh yeah, that's my idea of a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. You get to the emergency room. What'd you do? I shoved one of these. It's inevitable. In my ass. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard yeah. conversation. <laughs> I think the Chinese they knew what were, what they were doing when they made fireworks, you know. Oh yeah, so you can blow yourself up, yeah. <laughs> You're right. My my yeah. great grandfather uh, lost uh, an, uh, an eye because of fireworks. Like oh, wow. my, sure. My parents' grandfather. Oh, wow. so, it's actually common. Yeah, very long time ago. Yeah, but, yeah, well, you know, they got you know they got gunpowder in there and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, it's, it can be dangerous, sure. Yeah, like five, six years old, something like that, when it happened. Very, very young, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, we're talking but like nowadays, pe people are crazy now. They don't care. People start shooting each other with any kind of thing they can think of. Yeah, they do. Uh, have you heard of the, uh, um, I forgot the, the name for it, but uh they drive blind, they, they drive car blinds with blinded eyes. So it's a challenge. It's a, it was a challenge a couple of oh. years ago. Oh, that's smart. That's yeah, really it's, smart. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but people will do that, you know. It's like drive people, a car blind, you said? Yeah, with blinded eyes. Um, <laughs> what the hell? There was a name when, for was, that that I forgot. It, it, That's what happens when people get bored, you know. They create it, things the like COVID. You get bored out of your mind. Next thing you know, you're driving a car blindfolded. <laughs> Is it one of those trust challenges where, like, you have like, uh, like a co-driver with you, and then they tell you to go right and left while you can't see? Is that one of those things? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, let me check it out. I forgot the name. But you well, know what? Like people we used to tear up the golf courses after it rained because you could go out there with the car and the grass. And <laughs> it's all slippery, you know. And there's lakes out there. We would challenge ourselves to see if we could head towards the lake and break and spin out before we landed in the lake. <laughs> Have you guys ever? And actually stop at the border of the lake. And I did pretty good at that. None of us. One guy almost ran right into the lake, though. But yeah, that's what we did all night long one night. Have you ever driven on a frozen lake? We got away with it though. They were looking for whoever tore up the whole golf. We tore up the whole golf. The whole golf course it was like a, a now for, made for dirt bikes, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the things you yeah, do when you're a kid and you can get away with the, you know, yeah, if you're under 18. Buy yeah. YouTube. <laughs> just remember that. <laughs> I won't do that to Yeah, no, no, a buddy of mine, he used to race dirt bikes and his next door neighbor was getting a little pissed off with him because he was making too much noise. So the one day he went on his lawn and just laid a patch, just rubbed the engine out and popped the clutch. Oh. Like <laughs> yeah, you spin out. <laughs> Oh, he just ripped the guy's lawn up. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, apparently it did. It's called the bird box challenge. He grows back, though. What? The, the bird grass box grows back challenge. Fast. Not yeah. if you steal it like fun with Dick and, Dick and Jane. You seen that movie where they steal the sod? <laughs> the bird box, wasn't that yeah. a, a movie? Yeah, on <clears throat> so, some, some, some show on Netflix. Yeah. Is it called the Bird Box? Yeah, it was a movie. Yeah. What was her name? Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Yeah, she yeah. was in that. I never watched it. This seemed like a dumb movie, but I, I haven't watched it either. But I just see the I see it on Netflix every time I I scroll through movies. It comes up. And I've never. I've not. I have not yet seen it yet. Right, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Oh, if anybody, uh, oh, speaking of movies, uh, there was a movie that I watched a while ago, I think probably about four or five years ago at least. The The movie's called Nalmanac. It's about a guy, his father worked for the government and he actually built some kind of like time machine. Uh, never heard I don't know if it's on, I don't know if it's on Netflix, maybe on Prime. It's called Nalmanac. I'm going to have to look that and, up. I like time travel movies. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually pretty cool. It's more of like a, a kid's movie. Like, it's, it's with teenagers, right? But they discover this guy's father, he passed away in a car accident, but all his gear was still in the basement, and he had this time machine, and the son and his buddies figured out how to get it running. Oh, and Project brought, Almanac? Can... Yes. Yeah, that's one of my yeah. favorites. That and uh, yeah, Primer. That's... I'm a team primer. Primers, yeah, primers. Good. Yeah. Is that what that movie's Those about? I, I know the name. I never watched that movie though. Yeah, it's Project yeah, Almanac. It. It's a great one. Yeah, I like it. That's one of my favorite. Have you uh, of the uh, uh, Kazarov, uh, the Kazarov mirror? Kazarov mirror. I've heard. Of I've that. heard of that movie too. Yeah. No, it's not a movie. This is a real experiment. A real scientist. Oh, sorry. A Russian scientist that uh, never finished his uh, experiments called the Kazarov mirror, and uh, it's like oh, a right. Yeah, uh, you know how, uh, like in a. Uh, oh, is it? Oh, he was a wasn't he a Jesuit priest? This guy. I'm not sure, but he was a priest, and apparently he made one called the Chronovisor. Uh, I know the coronavirus. It's uh, supposedly it's in the Vatican, you know. Right, right. But the Kazarov mirror is a replica. You can replicate this experiment, and I'm planning on replicating this. I just need a, like um, maybe a five by <coughs> uh, aluminum uh, plate, and right. wrap it around and you know uh, a circle, but with one open end, so it looks like a shell, like you know. And you're supposed to do two stopwatches. You, one person sits inside of it, and the other person outside of it. And uh, yeah. you, uh, like you synchronize the two stopwatches, mm -hmm. and there's you, it's all right. Time dilation. Yeah. Right, time dilation. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And so this is a That'd be cool. You replicate. Yeah. It. Yeah. And so I, well, you, you you can do that uh, with any kind of spinning mass because. Uh, uh, when I was building the end machine, uh, what's his name, uh, Bruce De Palma, actually did some experiments with uh, uh, putting um, an analog clock on the on the shaft axis of the spinning mass, mm -hmm. and he was getting time dilation. Mm -hmm. I said, that was a road time road dilation. Too. So, question: yeah. Would that constitute for uh, time travel? Sorry, say that again. Well, would that constitute time travel because if you're dialing um, it depends sure. on your frame yeah. of reference yeah. time, time, yeah. time travel into the future you just all you have to do is dilate time on on the bro well, body yeah, we do that right yeah. now it's called the he, will, in he, minute. he will travel into the future 
Because yeah, well, there's two yeah, there's two aspects to the time dilation. You have the perspective of uh, time going by uh, normally, and then the other perspective of time going by non-normally. Yeah. Or accelerated or reversed or whatever. So, hmm. you know, it depends on your which side of that you're on. We don't know. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you, you slow down, you will perceive time faster. So you will try, time travel into the future very quickly. Mm. I, 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 I'm down for that. I'll, I'll do that. And what, you're saying, you're it's saying this, it's, it's saying this happens and we just, we just wipe it oh, off. And oh, I it don't know. And say, oh, reset the clock. There, it's my battery. There <laughs> is a video. Oh, check this out. Some of you might have heard about this. There was a video posted the year that uh, Mike Tyson was fighting Michael Spinks. And in the crowd, they zoomed in on this one guy and this was around. Oh, he had a cell yeah, phone, right? Around, yeah, he had a cell phone. He was taking a video of the fight. This was 1993. Cell phones haven't come out yet. So he's holding this device, videotaping the fight. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure the video is out there on YouTube. Look no, at that. I've like seen it. Very interesting. Have you seen it? Yeah. I don't know why he's videotaping that fight. That fight sucked. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That was yeah, the, the fight sucked. Video what of the, the ball that was dude. what? Did you guys see the ball dude who was fixing his plumbing under the counter? He said he ran into his older self under the counter through a hole. What? A light Wait, showed what? up under. Yeah. It was, Didn't hear about that one. And he, and he has a video of himself, his older self, and they have the same tattoo on the arm in the video. He took it with his phone. I'd like to meet my He old went friend. through the portal and met his older self. He was under his kitchen sink fixing his pipe when the portal opened. And he said he went through and he saw himself, his older self. He they greeted each other. They were holding, you know, hand over the shoulder, taking a selfie. And he shows the same tattoo of his older self, older face, younger self. Same arm, same tattoo. I don't know, but maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe it was his dad. They got the same. I tattoo. got, yeah, I got a similar story, but but I, he I, claims I that it was he, he time traveled. He met himself and he videoed it and he put it on the internet. I got a similar story, but I talked. He didn't about make no machine or nothing. He said the portal just showed up under his kitchen sink when he was fixing the the drain. Yeah, I think that's, so cool. I that's wonder kind of weird, huh? <laughs> I wonder how. Anyways, he, guys, oh, go ahead. And I was saying, I wonder how he got back to show us that video. You know, because on YouTube should... somewhere. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyways, guys, uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. I know Bernie. I think he started his live stream, so I think a few of us are gonna jump over to uh, Bernie's channel and um, go from there. I'm gonna shut my the, stream the, down. Now. The world has a. Yeah, he, he wanted to show his, his his experiment last week at APEC, but he he, he didn't. So he's probably oh, going to show it up on uh, Bernie's channel. Uh, okay, hmm. so yeah, uh, we could all hop over to Bernie's uh, uh, channel after I shut this one down. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back again uh, next Friday night at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern. Also, tune in to Faraday Research for any updates. Um, guys, thing and lady, thank you very much for uh, uh, coming in tonight as uh, regular guests. And uh, yeah, let's uh, hop over to Bernie. Uh, he said right now he's going to send the link in about uh, 10 minutes. So uh, watch your emails and you should get a, uh, a link for his uh, podcast. So everybody have a great night. Thanks a lot. And thanks for uh, having we'll me. Chat soon. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having thanks. us. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, peace. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you, Mike. Bye.